So saving and loading data in Unity, how do we do it? Well in this video I'm going to presume that you haven't done this before so I'm going to explain what Unity offers to start with because Unity has some built-in methods we can use to save data to a file locally and then I'm going to expand on that and get a script from the Unity wiki and install it into our project because it allows us to expand on what we, we can store in data like arrays and vectors and things so very important so um, I'm going to do this locally by the way um, storing data from the internet involves XML and a, a web client language like PHP to get the data from a database online so that that involves a completely different subject to what I'm doing now we're just going to get data locally from my machine using the unity preferences and an extension script okay so the method we need to use to get data saving and loading is called player prefs and player prefs is not powerful at all because the functions it offers only allows us to store floats integers and strings and also to get them and these are the methods we use so we basically store data using a key a key is a string we can refer to the data in the file and the file is saved in different locations whether you're on a Mac or Windows or in the web player but that's not important because we can access all of the data using our C sharp script or JavaScript so here we are we can set a float set an integer and set a string that's cool I'm going to show you guys how to do that in a sec and we can also get the data using similar method names but they use get string get int and get float and we can also delete a key we can delete all of our saved data if we wanted to unity say use with caution but I would only use this when you're developing your game and you want to start again if you want to just configure your game all over again and the save method stores modified data if unity crashes we won't we won't really call this method if we're developing so if unity crashes or something this the save method is called so you don't lose your data so um there is one preference per file in the web player you can only have one pre preference file basically and it's limited to one megabyte in size if it's above one megabyte then um basically it will throw an exception so unity explains how you can capture these exceptions if you wanted to if you think you will store more than one megabyte of data but that's not really important so i'm just going to open my common script because there's only one instance of this in our game and we can use it to store data to the file and also get it so within the start method let's say when the game starts i'm going to store a string for example and to do that we can put player prefs set string give it a key so th the key is a string we can just say for example game title okay and give it a value so rts project simple as that so we've just stored a string into our file and once you've saved the string we can also get it and to do that we can just say player prefs period get string for example and then we can just say the key which is game title okay and just to prove this works I'm going to debug debug log this value okay so this value should be RTS project I'm going to hop over to the game so here we go we've debug logged out the RTS project so that's working we have data saved to our file now and after that if we wanted to we can say player prefs delete all because well we don't really want this game side to win our game we might do but in this case it's just an example so then we can delete everything but as you can see this this is very limited we can only store basic data we can't store arrays we can't store vector threes or rotations if we want to save a, a unit's position in the game nothing like that so instead of using player prefs we have the option to use an add-on and this is called array prefs 2 okay guys if you want to seriously develop games and save data and everything you need to look in the wiki and this is some this is a great script it's quite simple we can just store a range of other data types like vector twos vector threes rotations colors booleans things like that and all of these are arrays so just a nice way to uh, store other things in your preference file and uh, to install this if we scroll down it's got a javascript version and also a c sharp version here we can just copy and paste it. I'll go through the script in a sec, but right down to the bottom of the page. Okay, copy. And uh, they recommend you install it in your standard assets folder. So let's do that. Create C sharp. And they also recommend we call it player prefs 
X, capital X, okay, and installing scripts from the wiki is very simple, just paste the whole thing in and save it out, okay. So we don't need to attach it to a script, Unity now recognizes this is available to us, and now we can start using it. So say I wanted to store a vector 3, we can now say player prefs x period and then we say set vector 3 a bunch of new options now available to us and again we can give it a key let's call it player pause player position and then we can pass in our new vector 3 okay this can be passed in by a variable but I'm just going to write a new vector 3 here so let's say 30f2010 just as an example okay so here we go we've created a a uh, vector 3 in our preferences file using player prefs x. Okay, so just to prove this works, I'm going to call this as well. So debug log. Okay, so player prefs x period get vector 3 player pause. Okay, and that's cool. So when we call player prefs delete all, um, even the things with player pref x will be deleted because all the data is stored on the same file. The file um, mentioned here. So because I'm on a Mac, um, player prefs is stored in library preferences folder. It's named Unity period company name period product name, and it's a plist file. Okay, if you want to find that in your on your machine. So as well as using player prefs delete all to delete everything, including the player prefs x. We can also use player prefs delete key, um, player pause, so we can delete stuff we've created with player prefs x using player prefs. Okay, that's just the way things work because all our data is stored on the same file. So let's see if this works. We should debug log the game title, then we should debug log our player position, which is this, and then we can delete everything. And after we've deleted everything, I'm going to debug log the player position once again. And this time it should be at vector three zero. By the way, player pref x, if the um if the key doesn't exist, um player pref x will just give a an empty array of that data type. So in this case we'll get an empty vector three. Okay, so I'm just gonna play the game and show you that everything works. Okay, so here we go. We've debug logged our RTS project, our game title, that's cool. Yep, the uh, vector three array has been saved, and after we've deleted everything, we get a vector three zero. Okay, so that's cool. So that's all I wanted to go through in this video, really. And um, now we know how to save data and load data using player prefs and player prefs x. There's a few more things um, you might want to look at in the player pref x. There's some important notes, I think, if we scroll right up. Okay, so like so, when saving string arrays, each string can have a maximum of 255 characters so I don't think there'll be there'll be much cases of going above that and just some important notes like that to get used to okay so this is how we store data in unity um, I'd use array prefs too and if you guys like creating editor scripts to add add-ons to the unity editor, editor itself you can replace player prefs with editor prefs to um, save editor preferences as well just a side note there. So this is how we save and load locally using Unity and don't get me wrong there are other solutions as well if you want to use a database structure and things if for large amounts of data but this is where we should start off. Okay guys thanks for watching the video hopefully see you in the next video.